In this video, we're gonna talk about seven common things that happen to RVs and how to repair them. Now, here's the deal. RVs are actually built like really, really fast. And so there can be a lot of margin for error in the build process. And as a result, there are a lot of things that go wrong, but there tend to be a lot of common things that we see over and over that happen to RVs. And usually it's a pretty simple fix. So we're running into a little bit of an issue. So this is gonna be a video you might wanna bookmark come back to later to just have in that resource library as you're out on the road or just even that weekend camping trip because chances are these problems you might be able to just fix it yourself and save a ton of money without having to call an rv tech so let's jump into number one all right so common problem number one is actually not having anything that runs off of your propane working. So like for us, we still have our hot water attached to propane. A lot of RVs still have propane stoves and a lot of RVs too have a propane type of furnace. So if for some reason, none of those propane appliances are working, maybe you go to turn on the stove or you go to turn on the furnace and that appliance is not working, go over to where your propane tank is, turn it completely off, then turn it back on and see if you can get that appliance to work. If it doesn't work the first time, don't be alarmed. Sometimes it can take three or four times of completely shutting the propane off at the source and turning it back on to just free up the flow of propane in those lines. And usually that does the trick. Another quick little tip is like, let's say maybe the furnace doesn't want to fire up, fire up the stove or fire up another propane appliance first, then shut that down, then come back to the appliance that you're trying to power up. That also usually does the trick. All right, so this next problem is something that we hear RVers talk about all the time. And we've actually experienced this ourselves. And let me tell you what, this is a super frustrating problem because it can be hard to figure out, but that is water leaks and roof leaks. <sighs> Try to get this completely dried up. The nice part about having this open in here is I needed uh, some tools. I needed my putty knife to go ahead and get this dried out. So all I need to do is just stick my head up here and I can now grab my putty knife. RV roofs require maintenance. There's a lot of things that are sealed up with different types of sealants on the roof and that sealant needs to be removed and reinstalled essentially as time goes by over the years, unless you opt for what we did where we just got tired of trying to battle water leaks. So we opted for a lifetime roof from rvroof.com. It's basically a brand new roof everything is sealed and it's done for life. So the next common issue that happens with RVs, and we've actually had this happen to us multiple times, are issues with the batteries. Now this can be with the house batteries. So those are the batteries that keep things inside of the RV powered. Or if you have a drivable RV like we do, then you have a separate battery or set of batteries to start the engine just like you would in a car. <laughs> Now, let me tell you a little story. Before that we went lithium, we actually had batteries for the coach that required water to be added to them. And we didn't realize that. We thought they were the maintenance free kind. <laughs> we literally spent almost a whole summer struggling with power, not realizing that our batteries just needed to have water added to them. So make sure you check your batteries, you test your batteries, perform any needed maintenance to your batteries. We'll just make life a whole lot simpler and with these batteries that start, we know we need to do something with these. So that's gonna be next up on the list. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you want some more tips and tricks on battery replacement, because that's coming very, very soon. So now the next common issue with the RVs are issues with the RV toilet and the black tank plumbing. Now, here is the deal. A lot of these issues you can take care of yourself by just maintaining 
your toilet and your black tank in the first place. Now, here's a quick story where <laughs> we made a really bad mistake when we first started, and that was I was just using a regular household toilet brush to clean our RV toilet, not knowing that those bristles are hard and actually because of the rubber seals that are inside of RV toilets, it destroyed our seal and we had to take the toilet apart and replace that seal which is a pretty nasty job so when it comes to rv toilets black tanks you can avoid problems by just using the right tool for the right job so speaking of using the right tools for the right job we have been using this cleaner called released by sidequest for the past six months and it has literally become our go-to when cleaning the rv now one of the reasons we love using release is it can literally be used on everything in and around the rv so not only on things like counters and tables but even outside of the rv and it's even safe for ceramic coatings so if you're an rv traveler like we are you know some of the areas of this country are just more buggy than others and since bugs are like goo on the front of an rv we are loving release to keep the outside of our RV nice and clean as well as the inside. It cleans any organic soils like mold and mildew too, so perfect for cleaning those awnings. Release has been used in the aviation industry for a long time, so it's a high-tech, all-surface cleaner and degreaser. It has no odor, it's non-toxic, biodegradable, and made right here in the USA. We've been using Release not just for the RV, but also for cleaning around the Glamper Hideaway as well. Now, this is the cool thing. A gallon of the concentrate makes 80 of these bottles at just over a dollar a bottle. I mean, it's like a dollar 12 is the actual cost per bottle. And that's cheaper than what I can buy a bottle of cleaner at the Dollar Tree. You can visit gratefulglamper.com forward slash release and use the code grateful to save 10% off of your purchase with free shipping for orders over $75. Or visit the link in the description below and a huge thanks to SideQuest and Release for sponsoring this video. So the next common issue that we have seen time and time again is with tires on an RV. Now, regardless of what type of RV you have, you're gonna have tires. So if it's a towable, drivable, they all have tires on them. And the biggest thing that happens is when tires are not properly inflated. And so we cannot stress enough the importance of having a tire pressure monitor to avoid some of those types of issues with tires, but also regular inspection. I mean, just visually looking at your tires, you can see, do they have cracks? You can also see if maybe they're wearing on one side or another, because that could indicate lots of issues with either suspension, axles, but the last thing you want is to be sitting on the road with a blown out tire or have damage ensue because you do have a blowout. And a lot of times that can be preventable with some inspection and some maintenance. So the next common issue that a lot of people face with RVs are problems with the slide outs. Well, it's just not working right now. Now, slide outs can be great because they provide a lot of extra space on the inside of the RV, but they definitely require caution with operation. So I can't tell you how many times that I've actually damaged things on our slide outs because I went to go put the slide in and there was a chair leaning right here that I didn't realize was there because I didn't come out and look before I put the slide in. And yes, I damaged one of the basement compartments on the RV because of that. Also, when you get to a campsite, looking around and making sure there aren't any trees or rocks that are in the way of the slide out. Been there and done that as well. But on the interior, making sure that there's nothing in the way. We've seen lots of families that have damaged their flooring because of a small toy, like a Lego or whatever, that's trapped under the slide. They don't know it. They go to bring it in and it gouges a big problem in the floor. Some precaution goes a long way. Also, making sure your RV is level before putting these slides out can help with any misalignment issues or things like that that can happen and your best friend is always your owner's manual. So if you have a slide out problem, it doesn't wanna come in or go out, check the basics first, consult your owner's manual, especially if you are in a situation where you may need to manually override that to get it to come in or out. So now the next common issue that a lot of people face in RVs are appliance issues. So things like the refrigerator or maybe the air conditioning units, the microwave, just different types of appliances that people end up having issues with. Now with the refrigerator, a lot of RVs come with an absorption style refrigerator, meaning it's dual mode. It can work off of propane or it can work off of electricity. 
And the common issues with those really can just be when the RV isn't level or if there's not good air circulation inside of the fridge. So making sure that the RV is level, but also putting some battery operated fans inside of the fridge to circulate that air can help keep it a lot cooler. We were actually tired of struggling with the absorption fridge. So we ended up upgrading this into a compressor driven style, 12 volt electric fridge while keeping the actual same fridge case. If you want to learn more, I'll put a link right up here about a video that we did where we actually made this conversion. Now, ACs are another area where people struggle with the AC, not working properly, not keeping cool. And really when it comes to this, maintenance is key. So if you're having a problem with your AC unit, jump up on the roof, inspect it. See if you've got dirty coils, if you've just got a lot of dirt and debris, or there's actually drain tubes that get clogged and then you end up with water spilling through your RV. So you wanna get up on the roof from time to time, keep all of that clean, inspect it, and that will help you avoid having issues as well. See if you've got things like the, um... yeah, so why don't you shut the door? Okay. What are they called? Fins, coils. <laughs> Now, if you liked this video, I know you're gonna like this one right up here with some of the top mods and upgrades that hardly anybody ever talks about.